What do you think the, uh, the strengths of the, uh, the program are? I think it's actually, uh, its real strength is the fact it's pulling on a huge range of research that's been going on in the academic community and in the Met Office, and it's, it's building on that and saying, what does that mean for policy? And so it's not having to start from scratch, and it's actually saying, this is the end point we want. What does it all mean for those who are in policy work? Okay, great. And, and thinking of your own work, um, um, what particular aspects of avoid have you used in your work? Well, I, I think uh, a number of aspects, actually. Um, the, some of the scenario work in the Climate Change Committee, we pulled on a lot of scenario work to work out to help the government decide and Parliament decide what the UK target should be um, for, for 2050 for carbon reduction. And what we've seen in Avoid now is a building on that and producing more of the scenario work for emissions and various possibilities for that. Um, and I think we've seen then the implications of this, um, again in the Climate Change Committee, I'm perhaps pulling on that particularly, one of the things we have to do is argue, well, what level should we be going for? And clearly Avoid has, has actually contributed a lot to saying, well, you know, for two degrees you get this, for four degrees you get this, um, within the current knowledge. Um, and then in terms of the, uh, the ways we might achieve this, um, are these things practical always? Is, can we actually achieve these reductions? And might there be advantages in this? So actually putting together the way um, this could be done in terms of energy, electricity generation, etc., all that sort of thing. So putting the whole story together, I think, is, is very important. And I think avoids being able to do that for the UK, pulling on great UK research. That's great for what you've already been doing. Um, thinking about the future, um, how do you see um, the research program, typical of the sort of stuff that Avoid is doing, how do you see that developing? Well, I think it's going to be incredibly important to keep this going in, in, in its various aspects. Um, one thing that really struck me today is people are saying, well, we can't get to two degrees, let's think about four degrees, and my goodness, what does that mean? I mean, I, I think it's a, to me, it's probably a disastrous world, but we need to fit this together. What, what would it mean if we actually went to, to four degrees using the best models of today and the best ideas of impacts? Um, and also just fitting together the, the scenarios for how we would deal with electricity, the low carbon society, fitting that together better than we have now. And there's a, a lot of debate to go through now in the UK about whether we really go towards our 2050 targets and how do we do this and actually the, the drawbacks but also the benefits of that and I think avoid fitting on top of the research that's happening in any way it could be very valuable and actually helping the scene as we go forward. Okay, um, okay. One, one final question yep, yep, final which final. is a rather lighter one yeah, I have yeah. to say and um, really a snap answer I guess yeah. is, is best in these like sort of yeah. psychological things. Yeah. Um, if a void were an animal, what type of animal do you think it would be? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's an owl, actually being very wise, looking at what's around and actually saying, hey, this is where it's going. Okay? Brian, thanks very much okay, indeed. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Jim, thanks for, uh, mm. thanks for taking the time to speak to us uh, this evening. Um, thinking about a void and, and your, your association with it, um, what do, you, what do you see the main strengths of the, uh, the programme yeah. being? Yeah, the strength of AVOID has really been uh, the ability to marshal the scientific evidence in a way that's useful for people who are thinking about policy and how to, you, what to do and how to take things forward. I mean, I'm on the Committee on Climate Change. We used it heavily on our very first report that helped inform you of the recommendation about the UK's 2050 target for an 80% reduction. And we picked up on AVOID again when we worked on the fourth carbon budget when we made the recommendation in 2010. So I mean, we have made significant use of AVOID. Uh, and, and you mentioned your work on the Committee for Climate Change. Um, um, are there any particular aspects of the AVOID programme that um, you've, um, you've picked up on and used for that? The, the most important part of the AVOID programme that we picked up on was actually the climate science part of it. 
and the global modelling. We had to do a lot bigger deep dives into areas around climate change mitigation. It was the climate science that was the really important thing for us. Where do you see um, research going to be of the be best um, help to policymakers? Well, well, I mean, we need much more research in this area. I mean, there's obviously the question of the science. We need to understand climate change impacts at a, at a regional and a local level as well as an overall global level. My personal interest is in mitigating climate change and the kind of policies and technologies that you would bring to actually get greenhouse gas emissions down. So for me, that's a, re a really, really big part of the agenda. Okay, and, and finally, a little bit lighter note. Um, yeah. Thinking about a void and um, if it were an animal, what type of animal do you think it might be? It would obviously be a weasel that would come and bite the policy system and make it jump. That's... <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much indeed. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, chat to us. Okay. Um, if I can just ask you a few questions. Um, thinking back um, of over the time that you've known Avoid, mm -hmm. um, what do you see the main strengths of, uh, of of the program being? Oh, I think the number one strength of the program is that it's starting to address the questions that those people involved in policy or any form of decision making are actually answering and so it's filling that gap between the science and the way that the science is actually used and I think that it's critically important from that perspective. And, and, and in your own work, um, any particular aspects of the, of the program, any output from the work that you've used? Well, Every time that I speak to anybody, any stakeholder or any member of the public, if I'm giving um, general discourse lectures, I always use the results of Avoid as some of the main focus of those presentations because they address some of the key questions that people come up with every single time that they think about the climate problem and how they're going to um, themselves, either as a business or an individual, address some of those questions. Today, of course, we've been here um, for the final symposium of Avoid uh, after its four-year research program. Um, how do you see the future panning out? What, what direction uh, would you see research taking along this line in the future? Well, I thought that one of the key things that came out from today was the emphasis on the economic side of things and how to develop um, an economic storyline, an economic narrative. And it seems to me as though there's quite considerable opportunity for more research to be done in terms of firming up that story and narrative on the um, economic aspects. So that was where I saw a significant future impact. And uh, one final question, mm -hmm. if I may, on a bit of a lighter note. Uh -huh. um, if a void were an animal, um, what type of animal would you think it would be? Canary. A canary. <laughs> <laughs> And why? <laughs> because I think that, uh, as I've been trying to articulate, I think one of the key things of the void is by um, really articulating the key messages, the key warning signals for people to then um, decide what actions they need to take. And so that's why I would say canary. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> Bob, uh, thanks for taking the time to, uh, to speak to us um, at the Avoid Final Symposium. Um, Thinking back um, over the programme, um, what do you see the particular strengths of the AVOID programme being? Well, the AVOID programme has very clearly demonstrated the options we have in terms of global emissions paths and shows what the consequences will be of us going for a one and a half degree or a two degree or a higher temperature target, what the risks are associated with each of those and how difficult it will be to attain any of those temperature targets. So it's a, an invaluable tool for decision makers both in the private sector and in government. Uh, thinking about your own work, Bob, um, are there any particular aspects of AVOID that you use, that you reference frequently? Well, the models that have been developed for AVOID to, by the Met Office to look at um, different temp global emissions paths have been very helpful. And we've incorporate, incorporated that in work that we've been doing with the United Nations Environment Programme, which has helped look at the two degree target and comparing it against current emissions pledges by country. So it has played a central role in that work for us and has been extremely influential in the uh, case we've been making that set shows that current pledges are not consistent with a two degree path, which is the internationally agreed target. Uh, we are at the end of um, what's been a, a, a programme stretching back um, four years. Um, 
do you see? Uh, what do you see for the future of um, Avoid or similar programs of research? Are there any um, any particular things that you think we should do now that um, now that the program has come to a close? Well, researchers are quite often quite keen to get on to the next research project once they finish some. But what needs to happen now, I think, with Avoid is that it needs to be communicated to a very broad audience. It, it should be the case that every business leader every leading politician in the country should be aware of the avoid findings because it's absolutely crucial that they understand these issues as framed by the avoid program to help them make informed decisions about how to manage the risks of climate change so i would like to see them spend two or three years just communicating the results great and and, and finally if i if i can ask you a kind of lighter hearted question um, Thinking about um, the Avoid program and if it were an animal, um, what type of animal do you think it would be? Well, I'm going to go for a snake because this is the year of the snake in the Chinese calendar, and I think this is the year when Avoid ought to be out there. In the same way that people's, uh, in, in Chinese horoscopes, people's lives are dominated by their sign, Avoid should similarly, to the year of the snake, be the main thing that people are talking about this year. Well, thanks very much for taking the time to talk Absolutely. to us. Thank you.